as I walk along the wobble on with an independent air. You can hear the girls declare, he must be a millionaire. You can hear them sigh and wish to die and see them wink the other eye at the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. <laughs> Gallard. And who might the Monsieur Gallard be? The gentleman for whom his place is reserved, sir. And the bag, too? Uh, if you please. Your pardon, sir, but this place is reserved. Uh, for whom, if you please? For Monsieur Gallard of Paris. I am Monsieur Gallard of Paris. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, some chips, please. Uh, certainly, sir. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux. 25,000. Les Vite à la banque, c'est au premier neuf au second. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Les jeux sont faits. Rien ne va plus. Quatre. Sept. C'est à la banque, trois au premier, huit au second. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. I swear to you, my love, as long as we live, I shall never, never be here. I've been to the Macra Bank 15 straight times. 15 times? 15 times. Excuse me. The bank's having a terrific run. Come on, let's go. Hurry. C'est à la banque du premier huit au second. Five million francs, sir. Thank you. Merci. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux. 
Les jeux sont faits. Gagne la All, uh, if you please. Et à la banque, neuf au score. Ladies and gentlemen, the bank and bank is closed for the night. It withdraws. You are to be congratulated, sir. It has been a long time since last the bank surrendered. Thank you. If you'll be seated, I got a check ready for you at once. You know, I prefer banknotes. If you were to cram every pocket till it burst, you still would not be able to carry away this sum in banknotes. That's very, very true, so I came prepared. <laughs> you, you expected to win? Expected to? No, I, I knew it. <laughs> One hundred thousand? Assistant Maitre d'Hôtel. I am honored. On behalf of the management, I wish to offer Monsieur the royal suite with the compliments of the hotel. There is a note of sincerity about all this that really sinks deep into my heart. But into each life, some rain must fall. This is beginning to look like your shower. Maitre d'hôtel of the old beach hotel himself. And now I am overwhelmed. Monsieur Gella, it would make me happy, very, very happy indeed, if you would be good enough to accept the use of my yacht for possibly a three or four day cruise. Oh, my deepest regrets, my sincerest thanks, but I am leaving Monte Carlo this evening. It has diesel engines. No, 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 no. Even with diesel engines, I'm leaving. A ping-pong table. A ping-pong table? The finest in all Europe. Mahogany legs, satin cover, a silken net, and balls that bounce and bounce and bounce. Mahogany legs, a satin cover, 
silken net and balls that bounce and bounce and bounce. Ah, you tempt me. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm leaving this evening. Excuse me, monsieur. Sorry. What luck, monsieur. I threw Hans back. Quick. Good afternoon, monsieur. Good afternoon. This is the one I have. With the compliments of the hotel, may I? Thank you. But look, a four-leaf clover. Two, three. Monsieur, it's a miracle. A veritable miracle. There must be no luck in the world like yours, monsieur. Oh, how I envy you at the tables tonight. Gambling casino, monsieur. No, another vodka. Have you ever This picture will probably appear in every important newspaper in the world. And the accompanying interview could not possibly be more disastrous. He describes his own luck as a miracle that could never happen again. In effect, he advises the whole world to stay away from Monte Carlo. He says people who think they can win are fools and idiots. What are you doing to keep him here? He ignored our four-leaf clovers. He deliberately walked away from our hunchback. He turned his back on our horseshoe. Oh, enough of that nonsense. The time has come and we must strike. Gentlemen, there is no denying that the loss of 10 million francs is a matter of great importance. But compared with the damage this interview may cause our enterprise, it is nothing. Quite right. It is so serious, in my opinion, that we cannot afford to let it pass without making every possible effort to counteract this vile publicity. Gala must return to the gambling table. I can only do my best. You'll have to do better. If this picture is of interest to the public, another one showing him returning to the sporting club will be even more so. I could, of course... I uh... don't want to hear it. It may be irregular. But irregular or not, Gala must gamble again. The money, you can afford to lose that. But those words he uttered, he must be made to eat. Now, is that clear? Yes, sir. Then go to it at once. Farewell, Monte Carlo. Farewell forever. And thank you. Yes, monsieur. My bill, please. Yes, monsieur. Haven't you a table for two? I'm sorry. This is all, madam. Some sherry? No, thank you. Uh, bring me a pink gin. Yes, monsieur. Yes, Sweden is perfectly lovely. But you wait till you see Switzerland. Especially Interlaken. You've never really seen beauty until you've seen Interlaken in the spring. It really must be paradise. Oh, yes. The sunshine on the ice, the mountains in the sky. By George, it is paradise. I suppose I can get all the skiing clothes there I need. Quite. We'd only stay in Paris long enough to make connections with the Swiss Express. Oh, oh, don't you want your coffee, monsieur? No. But the check, monsieur. You'll take that, won't you? Thank you, monsieur.
I'll take that one. Oh, I'm so sorry. Not at all. Wait here. No system, no plan, nothing but luck. The luck that still protects Russia's fugitive children. Is this a pepper? Yes. No, I played with a prayer and the cards heard my prayer. Angels in heaven, there were moments when I thought my heart would stop beating. And still they came my way. Mmm, good chicken, they came. But the true miracle, Paul, was that having won, you were strong enough and clever enough to stop. Oh, oh, oh there was the struggle. Luck rained on me. Once this hand held three four-leaf clovers. Dozens of horseshoes fell before me. Battalions of hunchbacks fluttered up my path. I simply couldn't have lost. Oh, my friends, I was a man of destiny. Wine for everybody. Wine for everybody. Oh, what a thrill it must have been. Uh, how you would have loved it, Nicky. It was the breath of life again. The green tables, the flick of the chips, the lights brilliant, the women beautiful. Some plump. Oh, many plump. I love plump ones. And above it all, the sweet throb of gambling. I never held with gambling, sir. During the war, your excellency's losses at cards prevented your paying me for about five years, which has left me with a, with a rather lukewarm attitude towards games of chance. Ah, oh, Ivan, never again. Nobody knows better than I that lightning never strikes in the same place twice, even Monte Carlo. No, oh, I've got my money and I'm going to keep it. Because to know how wonderful money is, you've got to go a long time without it. As we all have. Ten years of taxi driving. Ten years of cold and sleep and 15 hours a day for what? To earn enough for poor food in a cold room. Ten years of saving, a sou here, a sou there, to get together enough for our one great gamble, and I won. But I wouldn't win again. No, Ivan, henceforth from today, Monte Carlo to me is just a memory. The only way to cure a gambler, sir, is to kill him. No, no, Ivan. It's all over now. All over indeed. Money and plenty of it. To live again like a Romanov. Silk sheets, champagne, noble fur on my shoulders. And all the luxuries we've none of us had since the old days of St. Petersburg. We're going to pick up Ivan and I where we left off years ago. We're going to travel. First class, sir? Nothing but the best. Where to, Paul? I think we'll go to Switzerland, to Interlaken. The sunlight on the ice, the mountains in the sky. I have an idea it must be paradise. My Russian friends, I give you paradise! To paradise!
my melancholy playmate, how about some vodka? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Compartment C. Uh, I'm afraid so. But it's quite all right, you know. Not with me, I'm afraid. Would you be good enough to ring for the guard? I really can't tell you how reluctantly I would do that. Well, perhaps I'd better go for him myself, then. I'm sorry. Ah, Ivan. And no better man in all France for straightening out compartment confusion. Ivan, get the guard. Bring him here in person. You understand that by ringing the bell, the matter could be adjusted about twice as quickly. Oh, yes, certainly. Yes. <laughs> That's why I asked Eva. Meanwhile, you'll join me, won't you? Thank you, no. This is your first visit to Interlaken, isn't it? Well, yes. Why? Well, the truth is, I'm on this train only because of you. For it's you I set out to see, not Switzerland. In my opinion, you're far more beautiful than the Alps. Do you mind? Are you given to spells? You don't remember me at all, do you? Sorry. I was afraid you didn't. I sat directly in front of you, two feet six inches away, for four and a half minutes last night. Last night? At dinner. You sat there, I sat here, and your, um, the, you know, the, uh, the, the tall chap, he sat. He sat here. You wore a beige tweed suit trimmed with blue fox fur. You carried a brown leather envelope bag and a pair of brown suede gloves. Your blouse was rose chiffon trimmed with lace and a little diamond clasp at the throat. Your hat was brown, but your eyes seem bluer today than yesterday. I do remember now. Madame, Monsieur, it was the porter's mistake, Madame. Your compartment is in the next car. I will have your baggage removed. Ivan will see to that. Very well, Monsieur. You wait. Ivan, is it necessary that you rush yourself into a state of complete exhaustion over a simple errand? Relax. Yes, sir. Take your time. Yes, sir. Conserve your energy. Thank you, sir. I was sure you wouldn't leave. You mean your personal charm? No, no, oh no. Only that in the whole history of civilization, no woman has ever deliberately walked away from a conversation about herself. Are you married? This one. This one and this. And this one. Are you sure you haven't forgotten something? If I have, sir, I'll be back. You were saying? I was not saying. You asked a question, but I haven't answered. And considering everything, it's still a very impertinent question. Ah, but so important to me. Uh, pardon me. Oh, yes, yes, you see, she came here. That is slight mix-up, you know, saying... Have you forgotten, my dear? We must be up very early in the morning. No, I haven't forgotten. May I, uh... uh Gala, Paul Gala. Monsieur Gala, my brother, Mr. Barclay. Brother? Oh, 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 I am pleased. A uh, pleasure, I'm sure. Well, my dear, I suggest... Uh... Thank you, Monsieur Gala, and goodbye. Oh, but surely... You've been very eloquent, but it's goodbye. Lovely, Ivan, perfectly lovely. Why, thank you, sir. Thank you. Same thing again? Huh? Yes, sir. Just said she couldn't accept them. Nothing else? Only that she was sorry, sir. Ah, she said she was sorry. Splendid. She's weakening. 
All right, now throw those out and order others for this afternoon. Yes, sir. And tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. And the evening. Yes, sir, and the next day. Yes, sir. Good evening, Monsieur Gellard. Good evening. Uh, do you know Miss Helen Barclay? Yes, sir. Has she come down for dinner? Not yet, sir. Uh, a table for two, sir? Uh, for one, I regret to say. <laughs> Monsieur Geller, the employees of this hotel have authorized me to offer you 250,000 francs plus half of their winnings for the system you used at Monte Carlo. But my dear fellow, I told you at breakfast this morning, I had no system. But perhaps 300,000 francs, monsieur. No, 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 it was luck, pure luck. Don't you believe me? Naturally, sir. Very well, are you willing to do me a favor? Needs you ask, sir. Then listen. I'll be grateful to you, very grateful to you indeed, if you will see to it that Miss Helen Barclay is seated tonight at this table in that very chair. Ah, but it's quite possible she will object. Monsieur Gala, I shall arrange this dining room tonight so that Miss Barclay will sit here or she will sit nowhere. Yes, I suppose that's roughly the idea. Now, one of these on every unoccupied table in the room. Every table in the room reserved, except this one. But what will you do about your other guests? Seat them on the terrace, sir. The terrace? Will they freeze to death out there? I imagine so, sir. It all seems rather elaborate, but certain. It is now a physical impossibility for Miss Barclay to be seated anywhere in the room but at this table. She's coming, sir. <clears throat> this way, Miss Barclay. pleasure of this dance. I'm afraid not. I'm not dancing tonight. My friend, I've decided not to give you my system. It would only bring you unhappiness. But not enough. This is it. This is what I need. You can come back, oh, any time. You don't want me to stay? You? Can you give me solace? Can you bring me forgetfulness? Have you hoped for a heavy heart? Have you anything that I shan't be able to find in solitude in these eternal silences? No. Then go. You are not going to jump. I can only promise to bear your suggestion in mind. Hello. Would you let me? 
let me down, please? Oh, yes, yes, of course. You know, I like you. Please, Monsieur Geller. Oh, now, now, please don't be so formal. Uh, just one minute. Yes. Is that more comfortable? No, I suppose I've wished a thousand times that we might sometime meet together like this, alone, in all eternity. Are you going to let me down or not? It should be no time at all before we find some subject of common interest, some diversion, some sport, some mutual acquaintance, perhaps. Um, you don't know anybody by the name of Marshwater, do you? No. No, neither do I. Though I must say, I've always wanted to. Would you mind telling me how long this is likely to go on? Well, candidly, it's hard to say. Then may I have a cigarette? Oh, I'm so sorry. Mmm, pleasant, isn't it? No. Oh, but you just wait till you get used to it. Clever, aren't you? Not very. But desperate. Can you... Can you forgive me? No. When I think of the really extraordinary circumstances of our first meeting, I'm convinced that I'm unquestionably the luckiest fellow in the world. For instance, you, you take that mix-up about the compartments. Why, I couldn't have arranged it better myself. And as for what happened on the mountain, I was no more surprised in my life. Neither was I. Or must you go? I'm afraid I must. Good night. Good night. Set that down. Now give me your hand. My boy, I want you to be the first man in all Switzerland to congratulate me. Now let's drink to it. Ah, uh, drink. Fill another game. It's all very well for him to drink one toast to your happiness, sir. But this seems to be carrying his good wishes a shade too far. Oh, no, Ivan. I regard this splendid fellow's condition as a magnificent and touching tribute to the beautiful and saintly woman, Miss Helen Barclay. Bottoms up. I could go on rowing for hours, yes. Hours. Well, minutes, anyway. Sorry you came. My darling, to be with you, I'd swim that lake in January. This is the spot. Isn't it breathtaking? Breathtaking. It's such a pity moments like this can't last. On and on. Would it please you if I bought Switzerland and gave it to you? You're very high this evening, aren't you? Helen, there's something I've suspected about you from the moment we met, and now I know it. What do you mean? You're unhappy. Oh. I've tried not to show it. Tell me, my dear, are you in some sort of trouble? Would you call marriage trouble? Good heavens, you. You're not married, are you? No. But I'm going to be in a fortnight. Who is the beast? Pierre Prevost. The banker? You know him? Just by name. And you're unhappy about it, hmm? Are you aware that Monsieur Prevost is 62 years old? Well, then why? It's no concern of yours, Paul. Oh, Helen, you know much better than that. Very well. If you like melodrama. I'm poor. Pierre Prevost is rich. 
I want money. In fact, I've got to have money. I have money. You forget. This is melodrama, not romance. Besides, it's Bertrand that must have it, not I. Is he in trouble? Five million francs worth of trouble. A lot of trouble. Helen, I have nearly four million francs. My share from Monte Carlo. Would that help? Paul, you're not serious. I'm afraid I am. Oh, no, Paul. Oh, this is dreadful. You make me feel... Oh, don't you see? Can't say that I do. All I can see is that evidently I'm not fit to be trusted with money because... because I do mean it. Oh, you... You darling. I'm sorry, but what you said upset me terribly. I'm all right now. But... It's all settled. There's nothing to be done. I couldn't think of accepting your offer, and I, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart that I even told you. But being with you and so much fun made me think of not being with you. You understand? But there must be something. There is. Will you... Will you take me away? for a week, one week with you. Could I have just that anyway? Anywhere you say, my dear. Then, the Mediterranean, the Riviera, Monte Carlo. Yes, even Monte Carlo, if you wish it. The manager, I'm speaking for Monsieur Gallard. He's leaving. Yes, at once. Thank you. The trunks go to Paris. The car comes to the garden, and I, I return to Monte Carlo. I suppose you realize, sir, that this means that your money is already as good as gone. Ah, but you're wrong, my dear fellow. I'm already resolved not even to enter the casino. It was the sporting club, sir, not the casino. Oh. Oh, then, purely for the sake of argument, suppose I do merely stroll into the sporting club. I'm still safe. Why? Because I'm not going to touch a card. I'm just going to, to, to look around. You really believe that, Excellency? Well, of course, if you put it that way, it does sound a little preposterous, doesn't it? But again, I'm protected, because I've already set myself a very modest limit, 1,000 francs, not a sou more. And that is absolutely definite, final, and conclusive. And if that goes on the first play, Oh, well, of course, if it all goes on one play, there's nothing else to do but to have another try at it. Excellency, are you sure that this young lady hasn't some ulterior motive for suggesting, of all places, Monte Carlo? What do you mean? Oh, it is said that they do go to great lengths, strange means to get their money back. Yes, go on. There have been a dozen signs that this young lady is not all that she pretends to be. Either. Age is softening your brain. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hereafter, you will be good enough to mind your own business. <laughs> Don't worry, old friend. I understand what going back to Monte Carlo may mean, but I give you my word, I have fought against it. I fought a good fight, a hard fight. But fortunately, I have a very weak character. Oh, don't... Please. I wouldn't trade this moment for going? all... I've changed my mind. I'm not going. You don't mean that, Helen. Oh, I'm sorry. I just can't go through with it. I can't. Helen. Helen, look at me. Why did you want me to take you to Monte Carlo? Why not? I'm serious. It's very important to me. Oh, you'd only think it's silly. Well, tell me, my dear, please. I have a little money. Not much. But when I thought of what you were able to do at Baccarat, it seemed that I might do that too. You mean, break the bank? At least win enough to help my brother. 
I knew it. Knew what? That Ivan had softening of the brain. Why? Ivan had a plot. What kind of a plot? Ivan had a remarkable plot. You were an adventurous, a siren, financed with gold from Monte Carlo to lure me back to the gaming tables. And then when my millions had gone, you would throw me away like a, like an empty vodka bottle. Can you believe that? Never. Don't you understand, Helen? I love you. Will you marry me? But, Paul, how do you know now that Yvonne wasn't right? Well, even if he were, it wouldn't have mattered. I'd have taken you to Monte Carlo just the same and would still have loved you because I could never be able to help that. But inside me, I'm sure something would have died. Oh, Paul, I do love you. I do. Oh, my darling. Oh, my sweet. But, but I can't marry you. That is utter nonsense. We'll be married within 48 hours. It's impossible, That's gibberish. I can't marry you. Pure gibberish. You talk like a child. Come in. I want these trunks sent to Monte Carlo. Hello? Why aren't you on your way? He wouldn't go. Why? How do I know? And you did nothing about it? He wasn't there. He, he sent somebody, his man. Said he couldn't go, was sorry, but, but just couldn't go. That's all I know. He said that after he checked out? He never checked out. Oh, no? And suppose I tell you that he did check out, but I know it. Helen, you're lying. I am not. You are lying. It was you who put this thing off, not him. Because you're in love with him. You're mad. How much did you tell him? Nothing. Just that you wouldn't go. That's all. You realize, of course, that you're throwing away 250,000 francs on a filthy Russian who'll kick you out in a second? That's not true. Oh. So you think he'd marry you, do you? You, a girl of heart from a backstreet music hall? Don't you realize what you are and what he is? I don't care. I couldn't do it. And my half the money. What about that? Oh, tell him it was my fault. That you did your part, but that I... Oh, you think I'm a fool, eh? You think I'll let you get away with a thing like this? Why, we've got the money in our hands. Well, you think you have? Well, you haven't. And you'll never get it because I won't let you. I've done too much now that I'm ashamed of so much that I've lost him. I've made myself low and cheap, and I can't look in his eyes again, ever. But you'll never harm him. You'll never touch him, because I'm quitting. I'm through, now and forever. Mountain. Oh, yes, I climb the highest mountain. I climb the highest mountain. Oh, yes, I climbed up. Ivan. Yes, sir? Are there any other words to that song? I believe so, sir. Remind me to ask you to look them up sometime, will you? Very good, sir. Are you planning to lynch somebody? I assure you, sir, that I'm no happier than I look. Would you mind standing there a few moments? Don't move, and don't drop any of the hardware. I'd just like to invite a few friends in. Uh, Miss Barclay, please. Sorry, sir, but Miss Markley is no longer here. She just checked out. What? That's impossible. Where did she go? There's no forwarding address, sir, but her brother's still here. Shall I ring him? Yes, please. I want to see you at once. I'll be down in a minute. A single compartment to Paris, please. How soon does the train leave? You have an hour yet, madame. Come in. Monsieur Gallard, I'm honored. Where's your sister? My sister? How should I know? Where is she? Supposing I don't choose to tell you. Mr. Barclay, you need money. And you need it so badly that you're willing to pay off with your sister. Rather a harsh way of putting it, isn't it? I love Helen, and I want to marry her. If I 
If I promise to make the proper arrangements with you, will you tell me where she's gone? My dear fella. Will you or not? Why, yes, I will. Well, she, she's gone to Monte Carlo. Thank you. Hello, hello. Mr. Barkley speaking. I want a taxi at once. Yes, I'm leaving. And send my luggage to the Hotel Medfield, Monte Carlo. Yes, at once. Pardon me, Excellency, but may I ask, where are we going? To Monte Carlo, of course. Following the lady again, sir? <laughs> Miss Barclay happens to be a great deal more interested in her own luck at the gaming tables than in mine. Hello. I wish you wouldn't follow me. But I'm not. Mine's a train to Monte Carlo. I'm going to collect for my work. What do you mean by that? Only that Monsieur Gallard arrived a few moments after you left. We had quite a pleasant talk. And what did you tell him? Only enough to send him back to Monte Carlo after you. You didn't? Well, you can verify the facts at the hotel. He left an hour ago by car. It seems a train couldn't get him there fast enough. Change this for passage to Monte Carlo, please. I'm looking for Monsieur Paul Gallard. Is he registered here? No, mademoiselle. Then call every hotel in Monte Carlo until you find him. Notify me in my room at once. It's very urgent. Yes, mademoiselle. I'm very sorry, madame, but this place is reserved for Monsieur Gallard. Monsieur Gallard? Is he coming to day? We sincerely hope so, madame. Yes? I have the Hotel de Paris on the line, mademoiselle. Monsieur Gallard is registered there. Shall I connect you? Please, quickly. You. Please, you must tell me, where is he? He tried to find you, but then ten minutes ago he left for the... for the sporting club. We must stop him. Mademoiselle, you'll pardon my saying so, but I should like nothing better in the world than to... than to horsewhip you. He's coming now. He's coming. He's coming now. Come here, please. Oh, Monsieur Gala, nothing has made me so happy as to see you here once more. Thank you. For the prodigal son. Oh, Monsieur. Got it. Perfect. Make a thousand copies and bring them all to me. Right, sir. Good evening, Monsieur Gallard. So happy to see you again. Thank you. Again? I certainly hope so. Good evening, Monsieur Gallard. So happy to see you back again. Good evening, Monsieur Gallard. Good evening, Monsieur Gallard. So happy to see you back again. Good evening, Monsieur Gallard. So happy to see you back Good again. Good evening, Monsieur Gallard. So happy to see you back Good again. Good evening, Monsieur Gallard. So happy to see you back again. Some chips, please. Pleasure, Monsieur Gallard. Great pleasure, Madame de Monsieur. The chap who broke the bank? Yes. You mean Monsieur Gallard? Yes, yes, he's playing Baccarat.
Deux. Deux haut, deux à l'avant, plutôt au premier, c'est au second. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs, faites vos jeux. Again, if you please. Pardon, mademoiselle, but the director wishes to see you. A little later, please. I'm in a hurry. Please come quietly, mademoiselle. No. Cut. Huit. Huit à la banque, cinq au premier, sept au second. Am I your prisoner? Prisoner? Oh, we don't know our, our guest and one to whom we are deeply grateful. Won't you sit down? May I congratulate you on the success of your arrangements? Very ingeniously managed. Your check will be ready immediately. Uh, Monsieur Gallard is playing? Yes, sir. And if I may say so, his wallet is already considerably thinner. Good. Keep me informed of the play and notify me immediately he leaves. Monsieur the Director, since I'm not a prisoner... Uh, Miss Barclay, a game of considerable importance is going on in the back of our room tonight. Millions of francs will change hands, we hope. As you know, we've been to considerable trouble and some expense to persuade one of the players in the game to return. You don't dare keep me here. Helen, you might as well understand. I've explained the whole matter to these gentlemen. Now, don't be a fool. There's nothing you can do now. Why not take your check and let it go at that? has changed. What? I say his luck has changed, sir. Down to his last note, he began to win, sir. And he's still winning, horribly. It, he's winning. It could not happen again. It is impossible. No. Quatre à la banque, six au premier, huit au second. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs, faites vos jeux. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs, faites vos jeux. Je suis son frère, il n'y en a pas plus. Thanks. Well, it's, it's very embarrassing. We have just sent out the last tray of cash. We, we have no more. Why, it, it's utterly impossible. It, it's fantastic. It, it, it can't happen twice. Perhaps you should have let me disturb him. I say, how much did it cost us to get this fellow back here? About 300,000 francs, counting their pay. Hardly seems worth it. Six million francs, sir. Thank you. Merci. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux. Les jeux sont faits. Rien ne va plus. All. All.
Huit. Neuf. Neuf à l'avant. Neuf à l'avant. Oh, il lance. Too bad. My congratulations. My sympathy, sir. You came so close to it. It was tragic. It happens. Thank you. That will be all. Gentlemen, the play has concluded uh, quite satisfactorily. I told you it was impossible. He <laughs> never had a chance. Never. I wasn't worried for a second. The law of averages, you know. It never fails. Uh, Miss Barclay, I realize that any apology from me would be an impertinence. May I assure you that no one regrets more than I the unforeseen difficulties you had to encounter in this somewhat uh, untidy business. For you, mademoiselle. Paul. My congratulations. But Paul, Paul. Excellency. Ah. And here's some bread and cheese for later, sir. The brightest spot of the day, Ivan. You and your coffee. How do things go today, sir? Oh, no worse than usual and no better. Fifteen francs. Enough to pay for the gasoline. Well, at least you know you can't starve, sir, as long as we're here. But it's hard at times to believe that just a year ago this hand held three four-leaf clovers. And four million francs, sir. Uh, and four million francs. What a beautiful memory that is, to think of having been a millionaire. And today? Today? Oh, not too bad. I have a roof over my head. I have a suit of dress clothes, which I shall never wear again. My faithful taxi and 15 francs. That's gambling, sir. Yes, Ivan. Monte Carlo give us and Monte Carlo take us away. It's the same being true of women, sir. No, no, Ivan. Drop that. Very good, sir. Besides, what does today mean to a Russian? Living in the past and dreaming of the future? That's philosophy. Club on down and hurry. Mm. Yes, sir. Champagne, monsieur? Uh, champagne. Oh, no, just, uh, oh, I think a little glass of... Your Highness, Excellency. Oh, this is the Champagne, of course, champagne, the very best. Beluga caviar, Melba toast, iced fresh fruit, everything you've got. But, Paul, can you... No.
talent this is a pleasant surprise. How are you, Paul? Will you dance this time? I'd love to. You, uh, have you been to the bicycle races this year? I'm glad to see you looking so well, Paul. Well, thank you. Yes, it's quite a bit of fun, especially the sprints. I usually drop in there late after the theater. You're so, so sunburned. I've managed to keep in the open a good deal. Riding? Uh, yes, in a way. You expect to be here long? I suppose so. Until spring. It's quite a cozy little place. Worth remembering on idle evenings. Paul, there's something I've got to explain to you. Oh, please. Is it necessary? After all, what can you say that would make any difference? These things happen and they pass. Perhaps it's just as well. I enjoyed your song. Anyway, it's good to see that, that fortune smiled on you again. <laughs> Not enough, I'm afraid, to make it worth your while this time. Thank you. That was delightful. Good night. You're not going. Oh, I'm afraid so, yes, an engagement. But I'll try and come in again some other time. Good night. How about your supper, Paul? Oh, never mind that. And, uh... You know where to send the bill, don't you? Oh, God, of course. By the way, have you ever, after dreaming about it for, say, a year, have you ever done that under a woman's nose? Well, I can't say I have, Paul. Well, I did, just now. And somehow, I wish I hadn't. Thank you, monsieur. I have one, thank you. Why, Helen! The gentleman who just came out, which way did he go? That gentleman alone? Yes. He just got into that taxi, madam. Paul! Oh. Follow that taxi. Don't let it get out of your sight. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Paul! You're, you're not a taxi driver. Are you pleased? Oh, yes, yes, of course. And no money? I have 15 francs. That is, 10 after the hat check. Oh, it's wonderful, Paul, wonderful. May I ask in what way? Because you're not rich. Because you're poor and I can tell you I love you. And, and how sorry I was for, for what I did. If you had lots of money, I couldn't tell you. And I do love you, Paul, I do. Am I, am I awake? I do hope so. Still another anniversary of his birth. 
I give you His Imperial Majesty, Nicholas II, Tsar of all the Russias. Oh, is it real? As real as we can make it with what little we have left. And these are all nobility? Well, royalty? Yes, but don't, don't, for heaven's sake, don't call waiter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Taxi. Yes, sir. Um, 